In the beginning of this little light bullpen piece here, using the pitch logic, kind of piggybacking off the video I did where I was throwing alone, talking about the arm slots, the, the yellow arrow being the release slot, blue arrow being the spin direction of the heater. And you can see here in the beginning, playing around with something like mechanically, I actually produce higher velocity when I drop my slot a little bit. And I've kind of come to the realization, and you can see it in this video here since it's a little bit lower, you can see it as a, as a means to just basically keep my trunk in a little bit better posture upon, you know, anchoring down as opposed to going overhand slot. If I'm throwing it overhand, right? So my typical like 120 release slot and 1230 spin direction, what happens is my trunk contralaterally tilts to make way for my overhand slot. That's just what it does. Now, fine line and the discrepancy is when that trunk starts to initiate that rotation or when it, when it starts to initiate that contralateral tilt in relation to the front foot anchoring down. Now I do a bunch of tinkering with my mechanics and it's great having data resources like a pitch logic to kind of play around with these things. You can see from these first like four or five pitch clips that I'm actually just going with, like my body direction is going with my glove side instead of trying to be linear towards, you know, the home plate. Now, where I think influenced the most velocity from this change in relation to being straight over the top is I get a lot more pec stretch and a lot more chest pop. So not only do we want the retraction of the throwing arm at the greatest capacity that it has at the point of which we anchor down, but I also see commonality from a lot of hard throwers that, that create dual retraction, and that's creating that stretch amongst the pecs. Now, you're also creating the stretch from segmentation. Um, I have pretty good segmentation mechanics in terms of like that hip shoulder separation, right? These first few pitch clips going in that direction um, and dropping that slot a little bit shows, you know, that I do have an ability. And again, my intensity here was probably like 75% to just naturally create a little bit more velocity with those, those mechanics. And you can see from just the follow through difference going with that glove side, all right, going in that kind of misdirection. Now, is it mechanic, is it more mechanically efficient? Who knows, but you can even see in like the data here, right? This slot, a little bit lower. It says here at the yellow arrow, 130 spin directions, probably around what, 1250. And like I said, I'm usually around 1230 from the overhand slot, but 75%, 90 miles an hour pitch logic is gonna read a little bit hot, so say like 87. But the spin efficiency at 89%, you can tell that there's like this discrepancy um, from this somewhat of an unnatural release slot that I'm not quite getting my, my two fingers evenly distribute that energy through the baseball. You can really see in, in some of these lower efficiency clips that I'm you know coming off to the side a little bit, getting, um, that one's actually pretty good. That might have been somewhat of a misread. That one's pretty good. But the one, the pitches that go like arm side are a, low, a little bit lower efficiency. Now I start to gradually up my slot here, as you can see in these videos, to 
what is the probably like 115 120 ish area according to that yellow line what i noticed going really overhand where I would say is my typical slot, it was hard for me to control that exertion. So probably from the beginning of that bullpen uh, where I was kind of dropping that slot and working some things out, I could obviously feel that I wasn't exerting as much energy as possible, right? Like I said, 75%. And then when I started going overhand, it felt like I had to generate more intensity and, and generate more effort just throughout the entire delivery. And that's why I would say like the exertion level changed from 75 to maybe 85. And the velocity numbers were essentially the same throughout the entire bullpen. And you can see just from the body language in these first few throws, you know, like I'm basically flicking it and the velocity doesn't really change. And then from, you know, the throws beyond that, where I start going overhand, I start getting after it a little bit more, um, even though I was still trying to get to that 75%. <laughs> but it's hard when you're playing with two different things, basically two different types of throws to control exertion level. But the velocity doesn't change. Now, here's the thing, overhand, my typical slot, I would say higher spin efficiency altogether except for this last throw. See the ball's kind of shifted a little bit, he uh, favoring that index finger. So those are my findings, to keep it simple. <laughs> in recap, I was uh, in the beginning of the pen, I was trying to you know, kind of just see if, if my theories, I would say, were, were correct in the sense of when I do drop my slot, it's easier to produce effortless velocity as opposed to my natural slot, which is you know, way over the top but i sacrificed that spin efficiency now here's the thing that i'm going to have to struggle with moving forward is like i always talk about training stuff over command or stuff over consistency stuff over repeatability stuff like that right just because i do believe maybe i could get familiar with that lower slot and produce even higher power output numbers and that's the goal you want to get opportunities you got to produce power output you got to produce velocity those numbers don't lie you get less time to react i'll probably do some more stuff moving forward on like you know breaking pitches but i have a ton of videos on you know multiple experiments throughout my my journey on um switching my arm slots the other interesting finding was that even with the the release slot dropping a little bit here in the beginning and then gradually kind of getting up more towards the end you can see just from these, as I as I speed it up here, you can see that at the bottom of the, the pitch logic data, right? So these ones, so movement profiles, like my vertical movement doesn't really change a whole lot, even if I'm throwing it overhand or way over the top. There's not much deviation. So I think I topped at 17 throughout the whole pen. And there's a throw that's lower slot, 16, throw at lower slot, 16, throw at lower slot, 17. So it's interesting. I just wanted to give you guys context on what the actual goal of this was. And maybe if you did visually see it as well, like the first few throws were obviously mechanically different as opposed to the throws at the very end. Make sure to use PitchLogic discount code Robbie 10 I'll even provide a little link piece in the description that automatically applies your discount. But if it doesn't, Robbie 10 R-O-B-B-Y, one zero. So save on your PitchLogic. All right. Any questions, hit me up. Question platform, therobbyroshow.com slash ask. Much love.